will call the July 18th, 2023 Ormond Beach City Commission meeting to order. It is exactly 7 p.m. and um, I hope you felt welcomed this evening by Alex Schumann and our IT manager, Chuck Osteen. I want to introduce the folks who are sitting up in front of you. Um, to my right, your left, is our recording secretary, Taylor Lockhart. If you want to speak this evening on any item or an item not on the agenda, you need to get a card, fill it out real quick, and give that to her. Also, our city clerk, Susan Dodderis. And then we have uh, our city commissioner from Zone 1, Lori Tolland. Welcome, everyone. City commissioner from Zone 2, Travis Sargent. Good evening. To my left and your right, Commissioner Susan Persis from Zone 3. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Our Deputy Mayor and Zone 4 Commissioner, Harold Briley. Good evening, everyone. City Manager, Joyce Shanahan. Assistant City Manager, Claire Whitley. City Attorney, Randy Hayes. And way over there to my left and way over to your right, our Police Chief, Jesse Godfrey, and Fire Chief, Howard Bailey. For those of you listening online, I'm Mayor Bill Partington. At this time, if you would please silence your cell phones, and we'll have the invocation given by Pastor Neil Ganzel from Coquina Presbyterian Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for the right and privilege of governance such as we enjoy in this city. We thank you for each member of the elected uh, commissioners. We ask you to give them wisdom tonight as they deliberate what they have before them. We thank you, Father, for the police and the fire, for all the first responders in this city that every day just, uh, take their life in their hands sometimes to keep us safe, and we pray that you would uh, guard them and give them great wisdom. We thank you, Father, for the, the staff of this uh, city and how they put together these meetings, very detailed. I've, I've been watching this for about 10, 15 years now, and it's a remarkably well-managed city. Father, we thank you for your mercies to us. We remember in that respect, Lord, former board member uh, Rick uh, Bohm and his wife Dee, in the tragic loss of their daughter Krista, we pray that you would comfort them, that you would bring that family uh, together around the grief and, of her, uh, and, and, and the love that they have for their, their child. We thank you that in all ways, oh God, you are close to those who grieve. And finally, Father, we do pray that this city would continue to be the place where there is beauty, Father, where there is justice, where there is a commitment to do all things well in all elements of this city's great governance. We pray these things in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, asking him to bless us today, tonight with a meeting that is filled with uh, wisdom and peace. In Christ's name I pray. States of America, and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice for all. of the fiscal year 23-24 tentative millage rate, and I'll ask the clerk to read resolution number 2023-110. Resolution number 2023-110, a resolution adopting proposed millage rates for the 2023-2024 fiscal year, establishing the date, time, and place for the first public hearing on the proposed millage rates and the tentative budget. Directing communication, expressing legislative intent, and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2023-110, read by title only. Thank you. Per Florida statute, I'm required to state that the tentative millage rate for the City of Ormond Beach necessary to fund the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget is 3.9260 mills. This rate is 13.71% above the rollback rate of 3.4525 mills. The 
competitive debt service millage rate is 0 0.080 for the 2010 general obligation bond sinking fund. This is a public hearing. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak or ask questions prior to adoption of the tentative millage rate? Clerk, have we received any comment cards or are there any persons who have registered to speak? No, we have not. Thank you. At this time, uh, I'll ask for a motion and second to adopt the tentative millage rates. I move approval of the millage rate for 2003-2024, the tentative millage rate. Second. Second. I have a question there. Okay. Um, you, you just said 3.9, blah, blah, blah. 260. I'm, I'm confused. I thought that the A and B was 4.006. Kelly will explain it for you. Correct. It, the total is 4.006, but 0 0.08 of that is the debt service fund. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> Any other questions, comments, Commission? If not, please call the vote. Commissioner Tolland. Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Mayor Partington? No. And so the tentative operating millage rate is set at 3.9260 mills by a vote of 4 to 1, which is 13.71% above the rollback millage rate of 3.4525 mills. And with that, we'll move to presentations and proclamations. I'll ask uh, Judge Schumann and anyone she wants to bring with her to come on up. City employee working in our engineering department, and we love him almost as much as we love Judge Schumann, <laughs> retired Judge Schumann. So it's an honor tonight to have you here, Your Honor, and uh, to be able to present this proclamation to you. Uh, I'm going to read it because there's a lot of good information in here. Judges uh, come in a variety of uh, shapes sizes, interests, uh, passions, and levels of community involvement from, um, from just A to Z. You can, you can name them, but Judge Schumann has been so passionately involved in this community and done so much for this community that you would otherwise not know about. I thought it was important that we honor her and recognize her tonight, and um, she really has made Volusia County a much better place to live. So, whereas native Floridian, born at McDill Air Force Base and 35-year resident of Volusia County, Judge Bell Schumann graduated with honors from Stetson University, earned her undergraduate degree before pursuing her Juris Doctor from Florida State University. Upon graduating, Judge Schumann was admitted to the Florida Bar in 1984 and appointed as Volusia County Court Judge in 2005 by Governor Jeb Bush. Since then, she has led an exemplary and distinguished legal career. And whereas county court judge, Schumann presided over county court cases, including misdemeanors, traffic, civil, and small claims, she's credited with spearheading the creation of the Volusia County DUI Treatment Court to provide supervised treatment for repeat offenders and establishing the sentencing alternatives for Volusia enforcement, save docket to divert homeless and indigent nonviolent offenders into social services, treatment, and community service instead of incarceration and court costs. And whereas innovative practices like these have inspired a groundswell of appreciation for Judge Schumann, both in her courtroom and in Volusia County, 
Community organizations have honored her for a great variety of humanitarian endeavors over the years, earning her the Chief of Justice Award for Judicial Excellence in 2018. She is most extolled for having led a countywide effort to create a transitional homeless shelter in 2019. We know it as the First Step Shelter. And whereas with her love for education, Judge Schumann is credited for teaching fellow judges about varied topics, including jury trials, legal writing and evidence. And as the chair of the Seventh Circuit Professionalism Committee, she established a biennial professionalism seminar to regularly bring lawyers and judges together for discussions on ethics and professionalism. She's been active attorneys and members of the public about the different court divisions and teaching classes to help police officers satisfy continuing training requirements. And whereas the city of Ormond Beach is immensely grateful to Judge Schumann for her incredible leadership and commitment to the families of our region, we thank her for her extraordinary public service to Volusia County and wish her all the best as she begins to enjoy the fruits of her well-earned retirement, spending time with her husband, Bill, two sons, Alex and Ben, and new granddaughter, Harper. Now, therefore, I, Bill Partington, Mayor of the City of Ormond Beach, on behalf of the entire commission, do hereby proclaim July 18th, 2023, as a day to recognize Judge Bell Schumann in the City of Ormond Beach and encourage all city staff and residents to join me in expressing congratulations and gratitude for her service and dedication to the community. Congratulations. Before we get pictures, Judge, um, in recognition of, of everything that I just said, and to thank you even further, I want to present you with a key to the city of Ormond Beach. We have the large version and then a smaller version you can wear on your lip. <laughs> You're all set. Officer Stokes, Gregory Stokes. Do you want to bring anybody up with you, sir? <laughs> we'll do that. We have some great presentations tonight, and uh, Officer Stokes is one of those officers who does an incredible job, has a powerful impact in our community, and uh, it's such an honor to honor you tonight. I know you were already honored at the uh, school, but we wanted to, uh, and Commissioner Collin wanted to make sure especially that, that we recognized you in front, of, in front of the commission. And so, Whereas Officer Gregory Stokes' 30-year career with the City of Ormond Beach started in December 1993 with the Leisure Service Department, his passion for the community led him to transfer to the Police Department as a community service officer in March 1998. In February 2000, he began his career in law enforcement where he worked diligently for eight and a half years in patrol. And whereas as a certified DARE instructor, Officer Stokes taught youth about the dangers of drugs and the power of making positive choices. This motivated him to be the first Ormond Beach School Resource Officer at Ormond Beach Middle School in 2017. As an SRO, he discouraged criminal activities, bless you, addressed safety concerns, and fostered a positive image of law enforcement among the students. And whereas throughout his career, Officer Stokes' pursuit of knowledge further contributed to his expertise. 
He earned two associate degrees at Daytona Beach Community College, a Bachelor's of Science in Criminal Justice from the University of Central Florida, and Crime Prevention Practitioner Certification through the Attorney General's Office. And whereas Officer Stokes received numerous official commendations through his career, including Employee of the Quarter, Above and Beyond Award, Meritorious Police Service Award, Volusia League of Cities Distinguished Service Award for Public Safety, Top Pal Volunteer of the Year, and Life Changer of the Year, as well as numerous letters of appreciation from members of the community. And whereas beyond his official duties, Officer Stokes was active with National Night Out and the Ormond Beach Citizens Police Academy. If I pass out, you're gonna kick me out, but I'm losing my breath here. He has been a devoted member of the Ormond Beach Police Athletic League, mentoring, coaching, and transporting youth to events. It is evident that Officer Stokes genuinely cares for the youth of Ormond Beach and is committed to their success. His outstanding dedication and willingness to go above and beyond earn him the respect and admiration from colleagues and residents. And whereas today we honor Officer Stokes and congratulate him on his well-deserved retirement, we wish him the best in his future endeavors, which will include spending time with his wife, Phyllis, and two daughters, Manisha and Nadia. Now, therefore, I, Bill Partington, on behalf of the entire commission here in Ormond Beach, do hereby proclaim July 18th, 2023, as a day to recognize and celebrate Officer Gregory Stokes in the city of Ormond Beach and encourage all city staff and residents to join in congratulating and expressing gratitude for his service and dedication to the community. stood up and I'm gonna do the but wait there's more for you as well so and mr. Daniels you want a picture all right come on up mr. Daniels all right I'm gonna let you say a few words about that let me present you with the key to the city and a smaller version to uh, First of all, I want to thank everyone for being here. And I want to especially thank the commission for recognizing this. Let me say, I'm trying to gather my words here, so just bear with me. I'm, uh, I'm nervous this morning. I, I talk a lot, but not here. Not, 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 not so, so, first of all, when I, when I do these things, I do them because I guess that's part of who I am. You know, kids, the community. And it was Mr. Barron's and his late wife, Mrs. Ann. They was the pioneers of the neighborhood. They're the one that led examples. Those were the people that you looked up to and you wanted to be like. They taught you about community service, you know, being a good neighbor, encouraging you to go to church, those sorts of things. So I thought it was just important for him I, I, am, I come from a single parent. My, my parents divorced twice. So people in the neighborhood raised me. And Mr. D was one of those who raised me. You know, so all the things that the marriage has spread out, I guess it appeared to me to Mr. and Mr. Mrs. Barnes as well. So, you know, I'll still be in the neighborhood. I will still be helping PAL and leisure services. Anyone else who may need my help, you know where to find me.
it's Parks and Rec Month. We have our leisure services director, Robert Carolyn, with us to uh, present a proclamation to him and his staff. Whereas Parks and Rec programs are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including the city of Ormond Beach. And whereas Parks and Recreation are vitally important to establishing and maintaining quality of life in communities, ensuring the health of all citizens, and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of the community, and whereas Parks and Recreation programs build healthy, active lifestyles that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those mentally or physically disabled, improving the emotional health of all citizens, and whereas natural recreation areas improve and protect water and air quality, provide vegetative buffers, and ensures the ecological beauty of the community. And whereas the residents of Warman Beach, including children, youth, families, adults, seniors, businesses, community organizations, and visitors, benefit from the parks, open space, sports fields and courts, facilities programs, classes, concerts, and special events provided by the Leisure Services Department, and whereas the U.S. House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, and the city values the essential services that park and recreation professionals, staff, and volunteers perform to provide enrichment for citizens of all ages. Now, therefore, I, Bill Partington, Mayor of the City of Ormond Beach, do hereby proclaim July 2023 as Parks and Recreation Month in the City of Ormond Beach and urge all residents to join in recognizing the benefits derived from parks and recreation resources. Congratulations. remarks. At this time we'll hear from those of you who have signed a card to speak about what any item which is not on the printed agenda for this meeting. <clears throat> you have three minutes and uh, we'll start with Suzanne Scheiber and Judy Dragon will be on deck. Good evening. I'm Suzanne Scheiber, 548 Sandy Oaks Boulevard, Ormond Beach. My organization is Dream Green Volusia, a not-for-profit countywide environmental group. The Wildlife Corridor in Volusia County was established beginning in 2001. Our Volusia Forever Land Conservation Program has been in existence for 22 years now. To date, approximately 55% of the corridor has been preserved in our county. Volusia Forever is a matching funds program. Land within the Wildlife Corridor in Volusia qualifies for matching funds through Florida Forever as long as the guidelines are met. Currently, any land located immediately outside of the corridor can be submitted as a special exception to Florida Forever, and it takes two years for review seeking qualification for funding, but there are no guarantees. The Volusia Forever Committee voted 8-0 to zero on June 16th in favor of county staff doing the research and ground truthing for the pursuit of expanding the wildlife corridor in our county. The consideration of expanding the wildlife corridor in Volusia County requires research by ground truthing and submitting to Florida Ecological Greenways Network for determination. There are only certain areas of the county remaining that may be considered for qualifying. The FEGN prioritizes land one, two, and three, which qualify for Florida Forever funding. The existing wildlife corridor in Volusia, corridor in Volusia County contains priority one and two lands. There are currently no priority three. We're requesting support for the research to be done as Volusia County has been the leaders of the pack with land conservation because of the longevity of our conservation program. It is time to investigate environmentally sensitive areas outside of the current corridor that may qualify for inclusion. There are no guarantees. Volusia Forever is the Willing Sellers Program, and we owe it to ourselves to buy for matching funds and protect our most environmentally sensitive areas that remain. We're requesting the letter of support from the City of Ormond Beach Commission for the pursuit of research and ground truthing efforts to be made by county staff for expanding the Volusia Wildlife Corridor through the FEGN. 
This decision will go before the Volusia County Council. With 75% of the residents in our county voting to renew the land conservation program, your consideration of this matter is important to achieving environmentally sensitive preservation goals. State legislators approved a large amount of funding for conservation and the information was sent via email to you. I'm not asking for the city, the city for money. I'm not asking the city to do the work. I'm simply asking for a letter of support. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Judy Dragon and on deck is Elaine Davis. Thank you for having me. Um, Judy Dragon, I live at 33 Wilmot Avenue and I'm here regarding a meeting that a number of um, neighbors that are with me this evening came to on February the 27th regarding 37 Wilmot Avenue, which is next door to me. And um, during that meeting, I spoke not knowing that the notes from the meeting would be given to the neighbor next door, and she promptly came over and threatened me after I attended the meeting. Uh, because of that threat, uh, I have to listen to a radio 24-7 now, probably for the rest of my life. That's about 10 feet from my residence. Um, I have a list of over 100 times that the police have been called to this residence. <clears throat> we were told in the meeting of two dates on February 27th that would take place. Those dates were March 27th, that her property was to be cleared and ready for an inspection on April 10th by the city. This is regarding scrap of metal, having transient people on her property constantly, homeless people staying at the residence. I don't know anything outside of that firsthand. Those dates have both long passed. Nothing has been done. The junk is still coming in. Recent camper was brought onto the driveway, which I reported immediately to Chris Mason, who has worked with us on this issue. Donna threatened me at my home after finding out I had spoken about her on April 5th. On that day, she told me that I would be sorry that I had ever bought my house, and she has proceeded to make that happen. I filed a complaint with the police department regarding her coming on my property and threatening me. There is another house that Donna is associated with and works out of at the corner of South Ridgewood and Seville. This residence is a sham. It has almost a half block of stored metal on it, and I don't understand how this has been allowed to stay this length of time. <clears throat> Metal scrapping is a big business in our neighborhood and someone needs to start to work on this immediately. Uh, I'm making improvements to my home and I plan to stay as long as I can. With insurance costs skyrocketing, I could be forced to sell my house at any time. Donna's home is destroying values and opportunity to sell for those of us near her. The real blame here lies with the cities dragging their feet, letting dates lapse and turning a blind eye to what has become a nightmare for many of its residents. A survey was done on my street by uh, Michelle, the chief of police, uh, a few months ago, where neighbors were surveyed about what was happening in our neighborhood. I'd like to know if we could be privy to what was found out on that survey. And um, thank you. Thank you. Elaine Davis, followed by Douglas Young. My name's Elaine Davis. I live at 76 Melrose Avenue. I'm actually one of Judy's neighbors on the back side. Um, my issues here today are based on code enforcement. Um, our neighborhood is starting to look bad, and I have talked to code enforcement several times. It got to the point where nothing was getting done. Uh, we've got vehicles parked, we've got trailers, we've got trash, we've got garbage, and it's a beautiful area. I just built a brand new home, and I just moved into it in January, And um, but I've lived on Melrose for 20 years. Um, we got together as neighbors, 14 of us. We had a meeting at my home. We invited Travis. He came. We vented to him what our issues were. He suggested that we send emails to you folks and whomever else, so I sent an email to code enforcement. I am now being threatened <laughs> by somebody who was on the list to be checked out. Um, that doesn't scare me the least bit, though, but... My, my concern is that nothing has happened. 
the same issues that I put in the email that I sent are still there. There's a commercial bus on the street. There's garbage at the end of the street. Uh, why the gentleman who just built his $20 million home on Beach Street isn't complaining about it because he's got to look at it every morning is beyond me. But we're just asking code enforcement. <sighs> not, 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 I can't say to do their job because they're doing the best they can. I know they're shorthanded. But my question to you guys on the board is why can't our city employees who are out all day in every area of this community driving pickup trucks and cars, when they see something that's out of code, why can't they report it to code enforcement and just deal with it? Because the new federal law says that if I send you a letter and your name is on there and you call, you have to, by law, you have to give them my name and phone number that I made the complaint. So what happens is now I've got an enemy but code enforcement didn't get the job done. So I'm just asking you guys to figure out a way to let the city employees do the job. I mean, they're already out there. They're seeing what's wrong. And I mean, I live right here in Norman Terrace, and I can tell you that on every block, from Granada to Sanchez, from Beach Street to US-1, there's, an, there's violations. There's just, some houses have three and four trucks and trailers just on their front lawns. It's, we gotta clean it up. I've been here 20 years. When I moved here, it was absolutely beautiful. Code enforcement was right out there. If I left a trailer in my driveway overnight, boom, I had a notification the next morning to get it out of here. So just asking you guys to figure out a way to bring it back. And I'll volunteer my time. I, you know, whatever we need to do as a community to bring it together and clean it up. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Douglas Young, followed by Cynthia Valdez. Young, I live at 34 Melrose Avenue. My issues on speed humps. Um, the city has put a couple on Melrose, but from Ridgewood Avenue to Beach Street, it's like a racetrack. I mean, it's it's really pretty bad. And I'm sure the city hears it on every street. We've been asking the city for speed bumps on our block for almost two years. One in front of my house at 34, and one in front of 76. We have spoke to the city many minimum of 50 times, we have also submitted a 28 signature petition just from our block. <clears throat> we received nothing. As everybody knows, the traffic has increased tremendously over the years, and Melrose has became, become a cut through street from US-1 to Beach Street and from Beach Street going to US-1. The speed of some of the cars is very dangerous. Neighbors while walking their dogs have almost been struck and they backing out of the driveway is insane. <clears throat> Please get us what we asked for, for the safety of our neighborhood. Other than Beach Street and Ridgewood Avenue, Melrose is the second busiest street in Norman Terrace. <clears throat> only, second only to Wilmette, which is an artery, and we're not an artery. I would ask that the commission request the three, the three traffic control reports that the city has taken to confirm what we're talking about. Cynthia Valdez, or Valdez, and on deck, thank you, will be Jeff Byrne. That was the order of seniority. <laughs> <laughs> so I was born and raised, I was born in Fairfax, I was born here, I moved away, I was going to go to Florida State to go to college, I'm sure you guys heard of Ted Bundy, I didn't go there, so I wanted to go to Texas, I was gone for 38 years. Decided to move from Colorado back home. This is where I was born in. I got tired of snow. I settled in Norman, graduated from Maine, started at DBCC, bought our house at 43 in Met, and we made it a duty. I am on the west side. Donna lives in the middle. Judy lives. What is ironic is I am an HOA manager. <laughs> I manage 2,500 homes in six different communities. Maybe there should be some ordinances to give you more power, authority, for it, to utilize our police force to make a hundred calls or code enforcement to feel impotent to keep doing things over and over. A judge ordered this cleanup. 
So my story is I have to put my husband aside for personal reasons. Had him on the market for a week, got a call, Rotorine assured someone will meet him at 10. Oh, well, y'all know Rotors on every hill if you can send me around here, but they flew one out of town, and I knew that would be a Christmas Eve. My husband went, let's go to breakfast, and we'll close for us. We did. About an hour and a half later, he had him on the way back from my rotor. They're just leaving our house. And they had an interview. Well, now I hope so. They've been there an hour and a half. I hope they love my house. Well, but they have concerns. Guess what their concerns are? The hoarding going on next door. Surely the city of Ormond Beach has more authority to take care of this and to help this woman clean up her property. It's really affecting my value. I could have had my house sold. Now I'm worried if I'm even going to get my house sold because this house was not designed to rent or I would not have bought it. Neither would any of you. This is your neighbors too. You live here. Travis, you live here. All of us live here. And for us to let this continue without helping the situation, it, it's absurd. So I just want to sell my house and make money on the most important asset that I have. Thank you. Jeff Burr, followed by Missy. see if that gets pulled or not. So, Missy Herrera. Hi, my name is Missy Herrera. I live at 111 North St. Andrews. Um, I'm here to talk about um, the wildlife corridor. And as Suzanne explained to you, I'm sure she knows much more in depth in the research of it, of, of the history of it. But I wanted to kind of talk about the wildlife corridor in relation to the loop. So the loop wasn't ever included in the wildlife corridor because of the BRI that was on the west side of the state park. A couple years after the, the wildlife corridor was established, you know, the campaign for save the loop started, right? Because I think most of the residents thought that it was safe. So as development started and more and more happened, people were like, hey, we've got to save this natural treasure that we have as part of our community. Many years later, 2019, Defend the Loop came, right? Because we actually didn't save the loop as much as we thought we did. As development increased and density and proximity to the historic wildlife. So now we have regrow the loop, right? Because now we're trying to regrow the, what we didn't save and what we didn't defend. Please get behind the letter of support to the County Council requesting a vote in favor of committing county staff to prioritizing research avail researching available land adjacent to the wildlife corridor because we won't have a second chance to regrow this. Thank you. Thank you. And um, approval of minutes. The minutes have been sent to the commission for review. Also posted to the city's website. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? These are the June 6, 2023 regular city commission. Mr. Mayor, I move approval. Second. Approval seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign, and we'll show those be passed unanimously. We now move to the consent agenda. Does any commissioner wish to pull any item off of the consent agenda? I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. We can second it. Please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. Does any commissioner wish to comment on any of the consent agenda items? If not, we'll move to public hearings. I'll open the public hearings and ask the clerk to read 9A. Ordinance number 2023-33, an ordinance annexing a portion of Harmony Avenue right of way into the city of Ormond Beach, said property located at the intersection of Hall Road and Harmony Avenue, bisecting 1399 Hall Trail, setting forth zoning privileges and obligations regarding the right of way, redefining the territorial boundaries of the city of Ormond Beach to include the right of way, redesignating the boundaries of Zone 1 of the City of Ormond Beach to include the right-of-way, 
providing for transmission, providing for severability, and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of Ordinance Number 2023-33, read by title only. Thank you. It is the second reading. Does anyone have questions for uh, Planning Director Spraker? Anyone have any questions for the applicant? Mr. Mayor, I'll approve, move approval of Ordinance Number 2023-33. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Briley. Yes. Commissioner Tolland. Yes. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. 9B. Ordinance number 2023-35, an ordinance amending paragraph C, official zoning map of section 2-01, established of article 1, establishment of zoning districts and official zoning map of chapter 2, district and general regulations of the city of Ormond Beach Land Development Code. By amending the official zoning map to rezone a portion of a certain parcel of real property totaling approximately 0 0.34 acres located at 145 North Young Street, Volusia County, parcel number 4215-04-01-0270, from B-4 Central Business to Plan Business Development, authorizing revision of official zoning map, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-35, read by title only. Thank you, Susan, and I'll ask our planning director, Stephen Spraker, to speak on, I think, are you going to take B, C, and D? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Good evening, Stephen Spraker, planning director. Um, our presentation will cover the next three items since they're all interrelated. Um, the applications revolve around 145. Uh, North Young Street. It's bounded by Dix Avenue to the north, U.S. Highway 1 here to the west, and then Highland Avenue here. There are three actions that are being sought. Two are zoning map amendments, and one is the issuance of a belt and order. This property has had a permitting history since 2005. Originally, it was approved for 82,000 square feet of commercial and 10, 10 residential units. 2009, that was amended down to 21,016 residential units. Um, of that, 9,000 uh, square feet of retail was built, um, and the current application proposes 64 residential units. In 2019, there was a, a comprehensive plan amendment that basically set the boundaries of how this property was intended to be developed. So the land uses on this property are unique. There is general commercial, which is abutting US-1. There's medium density residential interior to the site, and they also picked up a parcel which is low density residential. Those land uses could allow theoretically a maximum of 107 units. The zoning has um, different designations. The front is planned business development. The back is planned residential development. And then they've added parcels which need to go into both the planned business development and planned residential development. So there's a lot going on from a zoning perspective. So the first item seeks to take this parcel here which they bought and put it into the planned business development. The zoning map amendment establishes framework to the last item, which is the issuance of the development order. The next zoning map amendment seeks to take the two residential areas which they purchased and put it into the planned residential development. That is 0.72 acres. So the last part of this is the planned residential development. This site plan shows um, basically the perimeter wrapped with landscaping, uh, stormwater ponds, and then the buildings, eight of them, are located throughout the property. The gross density for the project is approximately 10 units per acre, and that's for both the commercial and the residential portion. The existing Dollar General uh, store would stay. That's about 9,000 square feet. The total parking requirements for the project are 131 spaces. They are at 164. The building height for the proposed residential units are two stories at 25 feet in height total of eight buildings with a minimum setback of 50 feet. This line shows the um, demarcation of planned business development, planned residential development. The planned business development does allow both commercial and residential uses. One of the things that um, through the site plan process and through neighborhood meetings, um, there originally was commercial on this front portion. One of the comments heard from residents was it's too intense, too much traffic. So one of the, the results was to reduce the, the trips by adding just residential uses and then to restrict the entry into the project from, from Highland only. So these trips couldn't go back out Highland and cause additional traffic along Highland Avenue. So 
that's one of the items that came through the site plan process. At the planning board meeting, there are five conditions that the planning board recommended. The applicant consented to all five, and there's one more condition that, that came after the planning board meeting. The conditions were a movement of the dumpster into the interior of the site, additional security around the stormwater pond, basically establishing a wall around the perimeter of the site. My graphic missed, um, there's a wall proposed here, here along Dix, between Dix and the project there too. And then um, to ensure that this entry point is designed so you can only have entry in, you couldn't have people try to sneak out. Um, so it's designed to the best of the engineer's possibility of, of not allowing people to exit this. And then provide down lighting, which is a, a land development code requirement anyway. S since the planning board, there was an email from a property owner along Dix Avenue asking for a bamboo hedge along the rear of the property. Um, the applicant has uh, consented to that. If uh, the, the city commission agrees to these changes, we'll update the exhibits that incorporates this all into the second um, second reading. Throughout the process, we've received uh, correspondence um, concerned about traffic and overdevelopment, the impacts to both Dix and Highland, um, the lack of green space, um, the dumpster location, which I believe has been fixed. So those uh, information is, are in your packet. The planning board recommended approval of both zoning amendments with a 60-0 vote. They recommended approval of the development order with a 5-1 vote, and the applicant is here to address the commission with any questions. Thank you, Stephen. Any questions for Stephen? Thank you. Thank you. And the applicant, uh, represented by Joey Posey, attorney from Storch Law Firm. Uh, good evening, Joey Posey, 420 South Nova, attorney for the applicant and owner. Uh, and, and Stephen hit a lot of the uh, salient points to this, and I'm probably going to try to get through this quickly and uh, to highlight a couple areas that I think are important to the neighbors and also important to be responsive to what we're hearing. Uh, again, the, the idea is to be a community, a part of the community here. We don't want to, we don't want to do something that's adverse to everybody. And I, I really do think that there's that this is something special, that uh, something that. I think is needed and something that once we walk through it that the that uh, as you can see as we've worked through this that the viability and also with the uh, again with the neighborhood that uh, we, you know, we're trying to do something right here so uh, I think Stephen has pointed out again this is this is really infill development and that's something that you don't see very often and when you're talking about trying to do the right thing and cut down on sprawl cut down on you know moving out into these more sensitive areas of of the city that you want to take advantage of the areas that you already have and try to encourage growth there so uh, you know that's something to point out and uh, again it's could be potentially the first multi downtown multifamily in over 40 years I saw in the staff report there was an extensive discussion about that and again trying to encourage uh, you know again uh, those that density in the more uh, you know more active areas of the community trying to make it walkable trying to discourage folks from using those the, those cars to get from place to place and and you know being in proximity to the Dollar General being in proximity to downtown that uh, that's something that I you know th this this project could could accomplish all of those goals um, uh, Stephen touched on all of this again you got it it is a split uh, comp plan designation with a potential density of 107 units uh, it has commercial it's bounded on all sides uh, and again you know when you're talking in terms of good planning you want those transitions, you want something that eases into where you have the residential neighborhoods that are to the east, and at the same time, you don't want something so intense or so dense along the along your corridors that uh, can be disruptive to them. And, and the this our site plan really reflects that with a lot of our buffering and a lot of our tree preservation, uh, et cetera. Uh, and, and you can tell, uh, you know, many folks have made an attempt at this, but we only seem to have accomplished the Dollar Tree part of this. So we're <laughs> we're, we're excited about uh, trying to see this thing to fruition. Um, the, as Stephen pointed out, this is an expansion of the existing PD. It's adding more acreage uh, that, you know, gives us an opportunity to add more open space, more green spaces. Uh, you know, I, I know one of the residents may uh, have may have pointed out that he didn't see much green space, but I, one of my slides a little later, uh, you're talking about a third of the property that is, is actually open space, and uh, a lot of the treat areas we're trying to preserve, uh, especially around that walled area too, and um, something that we were talking about is uh, potentially not trying to use footers for that wall to keep those, that, those trees 
from being impacted. So, uh, you know, this, we're trying to be conscious of that and to make sure that we're not impacting that buffer for the neighbors, which is very expansive. That's 50 feet from the from the nearest building. Uh, addressing traffic, we've limited the left turn, as you can see. Uh, removed the high traffic commercial area. Again, trying to encourage that walkability. We, you know, we're you know the less cars, the best cars, and you know, you're actually taking about a third of the trips off of the table by getting rid of that commercial. So, um, you know, I know there's probably not a perfect world for everybody, but you know, trying to be responsive to neighbors, I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, and as you can see there too, that the the internal ca the internal access, if folks were trying to exit and even enter, you could easily do it through the Dollar Tree and without impacting the side residential roads. So, uh, I think that's a win-win for everybody. Uh, it, just easily pointing out that the original PD was for five stories, and this is the present view shed. It's not that appealing, and you know could use some work. Uh, the it's next to the dollar uh, the Dollar General, and trying to incorporate that, that into the site plan was part of uh, the, the vision for what we were thinking here, uh, and also trying to address some of the site conditions because you know you have invasive species of, uh, out there. You have uh, what appears, I'm sure, to be homeless that you know have made it. Uh, you know, place to gather and you know really trying to get after that and make it better for the community is uh, uh, really as part of is part of this project too uh, and that's precisely what the proposed proposed view attempts to do you know we want that view shed along the corridor there with the heavy vegetation and the landscape buffer uh, the tree preservations trying to encourage walkability with the dog parks in proximity to the Dollar General you have the downtown that's just a few blocks away uh, there's there's you know, a lot of encouragement just based on the planning side of this that you know, keeps people from wanting to get into that car and having to use that car to uh, you know, use it as their mode of transportation because everybody, everything's so close. <coughs> this is an, a picture of the elevation of internally of what the buildings will look like and uh, the, you know, it's a very nice be uh, be uh, elevation with uh, some of the more mature trees. It, this isn't necessarily the frontage look, but you know, something when you're in the community, what you're going to see when you're walking and, and when you're using the dog park. Uh, again, here's another rear view of one. Uh, and you know, trying to keep that parking internal, trying to keep all of everything internal away from the neighbors, you know, big buffers, encouraging those that, that major view shed for folks. And you know, I thought this was a very nice exhibit that, again, in the hypothetical example of trying to see if somebody could see into the backyards, it's not even possible. That it's such a distance and at the highest possible point that you can't see over into any neighbor. So uh, that's that was something that was important. The again, I mentioned the 33 plus of open uh, open space on the site. It has about 3,500 square feet of natural vegetation, and that's being preserved. Uh, you know, and that's part of you know gathering these little pieces of property and incorporating it into the overall development. That that was important. That. If we can maximize that open space in that preservation area, uh, there's no wetlands, so there's no wetland impact. And uh, interestingly enough, that actually, uh, you know, after you develop this, it, it helps with the stormwater. That you get a 72% uh, reduction in uh, the post uh, 100 year with uh, with the development, just uh, with the grading and the in the stormwater ponds. So that was a huge plus for any neighbors that may be impacted by some some of the. The recent hurricanes and you know, those kind of things, because I know that's that's in everybody's mind, and that's that's what there's everyone's sensitive to, and I can understand that. Uh, and th as Stephen pointed out, the stipulations, yes, everything that was mentioned by him, we have no problem incorporating. We've already added the wall, um, we've added the dumpster, the bamboo is fine. Uh, there was a mail kiosk too that we decided to keep, and I, I neglected to put in the the curbing is not a problem, and the down lighting. These are these are all. These are all fine. We want to be good neighbors too. So, uh, other than that, uh, you know, being an infill project, uh, you know, this is really good planning. Uh, it's got a lot of site design work that really is a bonus and a plus for all the things that folks are uh, really concerned about in terms of trying to cut down on traffic, make sure that nobody's flooded, and that you're not trying to impact their 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 homes, their neighborhoods. Uh, it's consistent with the comp plan. Uh, it's a far reduction in the density in the comp plan. Uh, it's consistent with the land development code. We have a staff recommendation. We have planning board recommendation. And and uh, I think like we say every time here, if there's anything we can do to make this better for the folks in the neighborhood, you know, we're happy to listen. We're happy to be, uh, it's, I wish Dr. Segevdi was here too. He would say he's, you know, he's always listening. So uh, Joey, 
Um, I don't have any other cards. You did adopt all of the planning yes. board recommendations, correct? Oh, I thought right. I saw that in there. And Stephen, they're in the development order. Yes. Okay. We would ask you um, to also include the uh, bamboo um, buffer. And, and with the second reading, we'll bring back exhibits that show basically all these conditions in the development order. You want, okay, so that's B. I'm looking for the development order. B, C, or D? Help me out. D? Is it D? D. That makes sense. It's D. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's where you want the bamboo? Mm -hmm. Correct. Included in the motion? Yes. Okay. Good deal. Any questions for uh, Joey or Stephen? Mr. Mayor, um, just pretty much more questions, comments. Um, I agree with the planning board recommendation of, 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 the, of the masonry wall, and y'all have uh, addressed that. As well as the movement of the dumpster and the curbs. Um, my concern with this project, I'm all for infill development, by the way. Um, now, you know, we say that pretty much most development that will occur in Orange Beach from here on in will probably most likely be infill development. Um, what makes this project a little bit unique is it's bordered by two residential roadways, which are quite narrow. Um, and I understand the residents' concerns about the traffic on those roadways, the increased traffic on those roadways, the lack of pedestrian facilities on those roadways, no sidewalks. Um, one of the only ways I think I could support this is if we look at making Highland Avenue one way east from US 1 to Ridgewood and Dix Avenue one way rest west from Ridgewood to US 1 with directional cuts because you have access through that Dollar General store onto Dix Avenue. Mm -hmm. And I think what we want to do is try to prevent the traffic from going back into the residential neighborhood and out to US 1 and eliminate the trips coming down Highland to the project, let them come in off of US 1 onto Highland into the project. Um, again, primarily because of the traffic impacts of those, you know, very narrow residential streets. Um, that would be my recommendation. I know we don't like to typically change traffic patterns on, on city roadways, but it would, you know, kind of address the residents' concerns as far as the increased traffic and again, lack of pedestrian facilities. That's a huge, huge change without any input from the residents, Stephen. Right, so so one of the things we suggested at the planning board meeting is there was interest from the residents was to hold a, a lack of a better term, a neighborhood meeting. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did, uh, if you recall, with the land use that I referenced earlier, there was such an upswelling that that, in essence, led to the residential traffic homing. So what staff would recommend is to hold a meeting, you know, send out notices, and, and engage the interest. Um, obviously, you can do whatever you like with this. If that's the recommendation, that's fine. But I haven't heard any residents come to us and either agree or disagree with, with the one way in the streets. Commissioner okay. Sergeant. On US 1, turning into this development, is there a deacceleration lane or is it a straight just turn in? Is there any way to have it, the acceleration lane there? Because you have cars that are gonna be doing 45, 50 miles an hour, and all of a sudden, it, turning in. It, it would be a decision of the Department of Transportation, and you'd have to meet certain warrants in order to do that. So we can certainly ask them. Um, the engineer might have additional input. If you could repeat the question, this is Steve Buswell of Parker Mitchell Bergen Associates. Just wanna make sure I understand. Sure, turning into the entrance off of US-1, is there a deacceleration lane where come off of yes there's a, a dedicated decel lane okay. DOT um, I guess through a study um, several years back um, kind of made this a point of where everything's funneled from US 1 south um, this was the point of connection so you can't for instance at the existing entrance from the Dollar General you can't turn left if you're forced to turn right um, Harold I, I appreciate the comments regarding you know change in flow directions and you know we looked at that it just it's I thought I heard you say Highland you would want to be one way east one way east mm -hmm. um, again the this the purpose of kind of the modifications we made at the entrance mm -hmm. um, you can see kind of there's a big sweeping radius um, one of the issues that I heard from the residents um, through the neighborhood meetings we've had 
and again, this has been going on for several years now, was keeping some of the delivery trucks that are now forced to be through the neighborhoods, giving them a way to stay out of that area. So uh, providing the one-way ingress from Highland, um, the, you can see kind of the a big a bigger sweeping radius um, kind of near the middle of the Dollar General to allow them to move without having to go through um, the neighborhood to Ridgewood, turn left, and then come down Dix. It's, it's the intent is to try to keep them as much internal as we possibly can. Um, I'm always leery of changing traffic um, patterns uh, just from emergency vehicles, et cetera. There's a lot that goes into it, and I think there was a study already performed in this area, if I'm not mistaken. Stephen can probably elaborate a little bit more. Um, that's where the traffic calming you know, started. Um, and we've provided sidewalks the best we can as, as far as in front of the limits of uh, you know, all our boundaries. Um, and just to point out one other thing too, that I, I, I think it's intuitive to this, but the idea of how we laid it out was trying to keep it internal. Mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to keep the traffic off of those adjacent residential roadways. And obviously, you know, something has to go here. It's, it's entitled, it has some development right. Of course, it's gotta come back to you guys, but you know, trying to do something that you have an opportunity to where you can capture that internal traffic and funnel it through the existing curb cut there between the Dollar General and the project. That, that's, that's something that was very important to us because we're trying to cut down on impacting those residents. So, uh, you know, I, we'd love to be part of that discussion that if it does move in a direction of where those roads want to head in a one way, but I don't think it's going to be us who are going to be causing the issue. I think it's, <laughs> I, I think it's a other traffic that may be uh, utilizing those roadways. Commissioner well, Sergeant. I'm sorry. He still had, yes, I'm sorry. On that stormwater pond, is there going to be a fence around it? That was one of the discussion items with the planning board. Um, again, I, I kind of would prefer to keep it consistent with the land development code, meaning its design in accordance with the proper slopes. Um, because you, you start getting into, do you fence every retention pond or detention pond? Um, We've designed it so it's uh, there's literal plantings, there's the fountain, the slopes meet the land development code, um, possibly additional signage. Um, I always think, you know, if you do fence it, then someone is in there, then you have to jump the fence to get to them. Um, that was one of the items I think I need to, I guess, further discuss with staff as far as what the comment was made, how to best implement that um, suggestion. Because my heartburn on that is, you know, we had that child just recently that passed away that wandered off into it. So I just think if we can prevent something like that from happening in the future, I think that's very important. And I think that's, if you give us the opportunity to come back to you guys and, you know, we'll look at that. And, and I would imagine encouraging, because I, I wish I had the client here to say that, yes, sure. let's go for it. But if it's a safety issue, then that's something that I'm sure that we can talk about and make sure that we have incorporated for moving forward uh, if that becomes part of the motion. If you would come up to the microphone, John. John, if you would come up to the microphone, please. He surprised me. <laughs> sorry, sorry. And, and, and then back there waiting for the ideal time. It's like, well, somebody could say. That's, and that's fine. So it sounds like we have buy-in from the, the actual sure. property owners. I'm trying to make this you know, something that we can address. So if, sure. if, if well, I think this, this all started off, what, probably in 2006, Mr. Mayor, 2007. And I think finally this project has come to something um, that is, is very good for the community. I don't think we can solve the traffic problems. But I think this is the best that we can get in this area. Um, obviously, I would like no traffic on either one of those streets, but <laughs> that's not going to happen. Making them one way, that's probably going to take an act of God, it sounds like. Um, but I, I think I'm, I'm good with this project, Mr. Mayor. Just Thank with the, those uh, couple, Com couple changes. changes. Commissioner Persons. Yeah, my, my only concern is the, um, is the exit, the one-way exit that I'm looking between that one white building and the orange building up there. Um, I live near uh, an area where there's a no turn, but people do turn 
on it all the time. And and is it is it going to be designed so that it's almost like impossible to go? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's exactly right. It's going to okay. have signage. It's going to have you know elevated curbs. It's it is going to be as discouraging as possible. <laughs> and you know sometimes you get the intent that some folks said when you have a one way in that it's it, it's a one way, but it's not as apparent. This is, you know, given the trajectory of it, given how we're trying to elevate those curbs to prevent any possibility of the other direction and the additional signage, it's every opportunity is just to make that one direction in. So you don't get you don't get the opportunity to come out. Okay. And my just my last question, the buffers, how how many feet are the buffers? The the buffer is twenty five except around all the residential, it's fifty. Fifty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. A, a minimum of fifty. Obviously it's very expansive, it's extensive in the rear, but uh, okay. it's a minimum of 50. Thank you. Commissioner Tolland. Yeah, thank you. A um, couple comments. First, um, I do like the idea, uh, I'm, 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 a na I'm gonna say it right now, uh, Chief Godfrey, I'm a native plant person, but I think um, bamboo, particularly if you do the clumping bamboo, would be the perfect plant material to, to provide that buffer for the residents. So I would, I'm all for that. Um, and the, the wall. I know we're trying to preserve the plantings around there and when you do a masonry wall you do destroy that integrity but I also think that it's really important as well. Um, thank you for, and I think as far as the design goes with the traffic, traffic is a problem and, and particularly on those narrow roads and I appreciate your comments um, Commissioner Riley on that but I do think that this project did the best you could ever do addressing the traffic with the one way in off Highland and the exit out the other way. And using those curbs as a deterrent, um, I think is, is very smart. I appreciate the open space, the 33% open space. And um, I am also uh, a big safety proponent with children. Those apartments, I'm not sure the demographics that you think you're going to attract, but I imagine there's going to be children in that area, especially if you're having a dog park and as well. I think a fence around a retention pond, I agree, I would not want fences around every retention pond in the city, but it's close proximity to buildings. You get a little toddler wandering out a door and, you know, 25 feet, they're in a, a pond. That would be a, a just a terrible thing to have to look at. So, I applaud you for taking a crazy little space in as many years that you've tried to make it fit and make it um, appealing to the neighbors. I know no neighbor ever wants anything, but I think you've done a very good job addressing that. So, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tolland and uh, Deputy Mayor Bradley. Yes, sir. Um, and again, I I applaud the project. Um, my concern was the traffic. Um, obviously, I'm kind of in the minority on that one. But as far as the retention pond, and I think we've we've kind of had a standing yeah. thing in the city of Warren Beach. We typically don't fence retention ponds because fences are great about catching debris, and they're just somewhat, you know, not they're they're somewhat unsightly. Um, I think about Willow Pond, no fence. I can count up pretty much every retention pond in the city, mm -hmm. and we don't have fences because we do such a gradual slope that, and, and unfortunately, and, and to Commissioner Sargent's, I mean, unfortunately, I know these things do happen on occasion, but if we can, uh, I'm, not, I'm not crazy about doing a, a fence around the retention pond. I'll just go on record saying that. Any other questions? Thank you, Joey. Thank you, John. Um, it's clear that you have listened and brought back a project that is uh, not that the other one was bad but this is just so much better and it's clear that you listened and tried to make good accommodations for the residents and uh, this is even better so thank you for that I know this project is going to help our downtown and our four corners area because I know families that live in this area that on the weekends will ride their bikes uh, to have an ice cream or uh, go fishing or whatever it is they don't take their cars they get out and use either walking or <coughs> biking other modes of transportation and uh, that'll be a positive for it's close enough to the downtown that I think it's gonna encourage the life of the downtown we already have a walkable downtown with a lot more people than we've ever had and this is just gonna add 
to that. So, unless there's any other questions, we'll uh, call the vote on 9B. I don't make any motion. Yeah, I move I approval of ordinance number 2023-35. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion or questions? Do we need to include the bamboo and? I don't those think those on B. Are, that'd be on okay. D. Okay. Yeah, it would be on the issuance of the development order. Yeah. Thank you. Please call the vote. Commissioner Briley. Yes. Commissioner Tolland. Yes. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. 9C. Ordinance number 2023-36 and ordinance amending paragraph C, official zoning map of section 2-01, established of article 1, establishment of zoning districts of official zoning map chapter 2 district and general regulations of the city of Ormond Beach land development code by amending the official zoning map to rezone a portion of a certain parcel of real property totaling approximately 0 0.72 acres located at 145 North Young Street Volusia County parcel number 4215-04-01-0270 from R-3 single family medium density to planned residential development authorizing revision of official zoning map repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-36, read by title only. Thank you. I don't have any additional cards, just need a motion. Move approval. Second. Any other questions or discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 9D. Ordinance number 2023-37, an ordinance authorizing the execution and issuance of a development order for a planned business development and planned residential development to be located at 145 North Young Street, Volusia County, parcel number 4215-04-01-0270, to be known as the Orman Enclave authorizing the development of 64 multifamily residential units and associated site improvements under certain conditions, establishing conditions and expirations of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-37 read by title only. Again, I don't have any additional cards. Uh, if somebody wants to make a motion and include the, the bamboo. I move I, go ahead, Lori. I was going to say, I move that we accept ordinance number 2023-37, including adding clumping bamboo um, as described by planning board. Or at the rear of the property, is that where it's going? Along the walled residential area. Along the walled yeah. area that abuts the residence. You okay with that, Stephen? Uh, second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Briley. Yes. Commissioner Tolland. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. Uh, we'll move to 9E. Thank you both. Yep. Ordinance number 2023-38, an ordinance amending paragraph C, official zoning map of section 2-01, established of article 1, establishment of zoning districts and official zoning map of chapter 2, district and general regulations of the city of Ormond Beach land development code by amending the official zoning map to rezone a certain parcel of real property totaling approximately 0 0.76 acres located at 121 East Granada Boulevard, Volusia County parcel number 4214-05-04-0051 from B-4 Central Business to Planned Business Development authorizing revision of official zoning map, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof and setting forth an effective date this is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-38, read by title only. Thank you, and I'll ask our planning director, Stephen Spraker, to speak on 9E and F, correct? Correct. So this one has uh, two parts. Again, a zoning map amendment and then the issuance of development order. The property is located at 121 East Granada Boulevard. There is a Starbucks uh, next to it. The uh, golf course is to the north, and then the Sun Trust and the Publix to the west the property has a land use of general commercial that general commercial allows 32 units per acre uh, for this property it would be a maximum density of 24 units per acre the zoning allows 26 units per acre which when applied to this property would allow 20 
So there's a, there's a four unit difference between the land use and the zoning. The existing uh, site has been uh, demolished and vacant for a number of years. Um, interestingly enough, there's an FPNL vault located on the property um, that is very substantial to the beach side and has to stay. Um, so part of the site challenges was designing a building around that FPNL vault. Um, again, the zoning map amendment provides a framework to go from the B4 zoning district to the planned business development, which then leads to the issuance of the development order. Um, the development order seeks the um, 24 residential units. Uh, one thing that we looked at being in the downtown is the consistency with the downtown master plan. Um, the downtown master plan encouraged uh, redevelopment, um, infill of blighted properties, and the establishment of residential uses along the corridor. So the property um, application is consistent with the downtown master plan. This uh, exhibit I thought was a good exhibit. It shows kind of multi-layers. On the ground floor is the parking area, which we'll have another exhibit. But the main building is focused in the two areas. And then there's a dog walk area here and an amenities areas here. So there's really four aspects of the building. And the building doesn't go all the way to the property line. So there are some setbacks on all sides of the building. Um, and then there's a, a urban edge on the side Again, not bringing the building all the way forward that would allow some of the utilities and, and uh, roll off areas here. The, uh, this is the first floor without the building. So you can see how they've maximized the parking. There is uh, 40 parking spaces provided. Land development code requires 36. Again, just another shot of the outline of the building kind of centered in the building. The applicant also has a, a flyby, which I think will be very useful in seeing this project. As part of the project, there were architectural elevations that were provided. Um, the correspond or the reasons why we're going through a development order is to go from the 20 units allowed by zoning to the 24 units allowed by the land use and also the length of the building. Anything over 100, uh, 180 linear feet requires this process. There's no criteria for or against it. It just has to go through a public hearing. There was um, two correspondence received. Um, one was not in favor of the project. Um, I believe this individual also spoke at the planning board, maybe here tonight. And then Ormond Main Street um, has reviewed this project since the very beginning from concept plan, and they uh, provided a letter of support for the project. The planning board recommended approval with a six to zero vote for both the zoning map amendment and the issuance of the development order. And the applicant is here to address the, the commission. Thank you, Stephen. Any questions for? Stephen, great, thank you. Yep. And Rob Merrill with Cobb Cole for the applicant. Well, thanks, Mayor. That's exactly right. Um, I'm at 149 South Ridgewood <coughs> in Daytona Beach. Sorry, I got a little something caught in there. Um, I'm uh, I'm excited to be here. I think you guys have been waiting for some years to have somebody actually show up and and build a residential project on your main street. And uh, I'm thankful to say my good friend Brian Collier has stepped up to the plate. Uh, we've got a whole team of folks here to answer any questions that you guys have. Um, I'm not going to give you a long uh, PowerPoint presentation like Joey, but I do have a super cool video that we're going to show you guys. Um, I, I want to first thank Steve uh, and his staff. Um, we've spent the last uh, better part of a couple of years, you know, going through all of the, the, the details to get to this, this place where we're able to present this to you guys. And so we're, we're very uh, uh, thankful for Steve's recommendation for his very thorough report, as he always does, his presentation tonight, but you guys have a lot of backup information. I think that, as we always talk about, checks off all the boxes, the comprehensive plan consistency, you know, consistency with your downtown plan, consistency with your land development regulations. He's got a very thorough report that I'm not gonna go through um, like Joey did, uh, but it's in there, and, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. You know, it talks about things like the sense of place, you know, the walkability, all, all the stuff we've been, all the buzzwords that we've been talking about uh, for a project like this are, are in this project. And so um, I think with that, you know, of course, uh, as Steve mentioned, uh, we spent a great deal of time with Ormond Main Street, uh, both their, their board and their um, design review committee, and uh, everybody really loves the project. So uh, planning board loved it, uh, unanimous from them, uh, from Steve Breaker and his staff as well. So. Here to answer any questions, um, but I've got a video that I really want to show you. So let's do that first, and I'll try to tell you a little bit about it. 
So this is this is the the work of, of Mr. Bill Chafin, who's back in the audience as well, and he's he can answer any questions about the architecture. But I'm just kind of kind of give you the layman's view of it. But this is coming uh, along Granada, looking uh, towards the river. So that gray in the background, the colors aren't that great on this, but that's the river. Um, so as you come around the project, you see a lot of really nice color. Uh, Bill's incorporated this really cool blue glass. Uh, you'll see landscaping around the perimeter, some of which you're starting to see on, on this edge. The green in the middle there is a place for your dogs to be able to go out and play uh, when, you're, when you're living there. Um, you'll start to see, as we come around, a lot of open, open uh, patios with outdoor living area, which are really cool. Um, it's kind of hard to see from the scale. But as we come around the, the, the side, um, on the right, of course, is the Oceanside Country Club. You're going to start to see our amenity area uh, to the right-hand side, as well as some recreational opportunities that we're talking about, including potentially um, pickleball, which everybody, of course, loves now, and some other things might be happening in that bottom <laughs> left-hand side. And once you start to see the, the lower edge of the building where the windows are, you'll start to be able to look down and see where the parking garage is, which is hidden underneath the building, which is really cool. We also have underneath there um, stormwater vaults, so this site is going to be retrofitted with uh, with stormwater management, which you know um, doesn't exist now. A lot of these things that were built in this vicinity were, were done without stormwater. So, again, you're seeing a lot of vegetation um, between us and the golf course. You're starting to get a better uh, view of our kind of a resortish uh, uh, pool area, um, and then and this is probably the best view to see how it works underneath the. Uh, the building with parking. And so as Steve talked about, it's kind of, uh, there's kind of two buildings connected with a, with a, with a main corridor in between. Um, one of the super cool things about this project, I don't know of any place in, in Ormond Beach or even in Volusia County that has this, but when you come in the elevator, Bill somehow has managed, so when you come up the elevator, you open the door and you're in your living room, which it seems like in some bigger cities I've seen that, but um, I don't know about here, so we're, we're in the big city now. Um, and so again, I think that as you look at this and you see it in context, you start to, to appreciate some of the things that Steve was saying about the, the urban forms and, and the type of things we've been, we've been talking about with these form-based codes and everything, and that's what it looks like. So when you get the chance to see it three-dimensionally uh, moving like this, I think it really sort of, um, it sort of makes the point without me having to say a whole lot more. I will mention, though, that the front there you see has a pretty substantial um, wall, which kind of gives you a a feeling of, of, of presence along the, the edge, along the sidewalk, which um, creates, a, you know, a little more of an urban edge than the building itself, because the building's back just a little bit, and then with some really nice uh, landscaping and, and tasteful uh, signage as well, so that's it. Great. Any questions for Rob? Commissioner Sargent. Yes, uh, for the record, I've had a phone conversation with Mr. Merrill uh, last week. Um, and I had a few questions regarding um, where they're going to site prep um, construction, and he, he advised that they're going to um, do some of that behind the bank, which is very nice that we're not going to have trucks out front and disturbing the traffic flow. Um, I have one question for you, though, is I'm, I'm kind of concerned about Starbucks' drive through during the construction period. Is there going to be a big fence up? That drive-through is yes. <laughs> I just don't want dust to fly in my food when I go through there. Yeah, so, so you, you, you still have those masks that you used to use, right? Yes. yes. No, I, I, I think that you know I, whether it's going to have some some uh, you know they put the fences that have something that keeps the dust from going through. I think that's going to be part of it as well. But you know when you're building a building like this, it's gonna have you know, they build sky skyscrapers in Manhattan and they do it in a little tiny. So it, it's going to be done in a way that Brian's made as much of the arrangements ahead of time as possible so there's not going to be disturbance of the adjoining um, businesses. But i got to tell you, I, I think they're going to be happy to have sure. a whole bunch of new residents right next door to them. And certainly all of the restaurants, all of the, you know, the, uh, the publics, the, you know, the banks, the offices, you know, having, having heads in beds right on Main Street is, is critical to, sure. to sort of the momentum we've been trying to start here. I think this is a great project, Mr. Mayor. Um, we have a dilapidated site that we finally have a developer after 10 years roughly putting a high quality project in. I just, it's very good. The only other question I have is on the FDOT has proposed, um, and I wish I could get this on the main screen. I don't know how we can do that, but they're going to have a median right there at Starbucks. Um, have you all seen that? 
Yes, yeah, so I don't think that's all settled yet. I know we've had conversations. Yeah. Luke is here from Death Because Florida. that's going to be a direct loop left yeah. out only. Oops. Did you see that, Mr. Ryan? I did. See oh, if that would be the outlet of He's this project right here. This is Starbucks College outlet. Zepco this and Associates. Um, we were shared the plans uh, by FDOT during the planning stage, and we reached out to their representative and made sure that we're going to have full access, you know, coming in and out of our site, left turns will be allowed, and then they did confirm that we will have full access. Wonderful. We have a paper copy of it as well that we Great. shared. Great project. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Briley and then Commissioner Persis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just for full disclosure, I have... I did speak with Mr. Collier some time back on this project after the public meeting, and Mr. Porter, Rob, we never got to talk about it. I'm sorry. But, I saw uh, you out in the hallway. Yeah, you did. We did. We, we just, yeah. But, um, you know, 1993, 1994, I was appointed to the Downtown Revitalization Task Force. And later on, in 96, over Main Street when it started, and this was the exact type of infill development we talked about in our downtown, where residents could live downtown, walk our downtown. We, we, we identified that we needed residential uses in our downtown. And actually, when I saw this, I got kind of excited about it. I think you all have done a good job with it. And I think it's exactly what we need on the beach side, especially on this lot. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. And Commissioner Persis. Yes. Um, I just want to say the first time I saw this, um, the plans for this, I was so excited. I wanted to buy one right away. I think, I think, I think this is an epic project for Ormond Beach. Um, it's exciting to have this new kind of housing for our residents to possibly buy. Um, it is consistent with our downtown master plan. It has underground parking. You know, there's two buildings. It's, it's attractive. It's just something that you want to look at. The walkability, you know, it's near restaurants, shopping, Publix is right there, and Starbucks, which, you know, I would be there every single day. Dog park area, I mean, people love their dogs. It has everything that a resident could want there. I love the open patios, the views, the pool, everything is great. So I just want to commend the builders, the developers, everybody. You just did a fabulous job for our city. Thank you. Thank you. And Commissioner Tolland. And I didn't need to talk to you because I went to the planning board meeting and I really listened to everything um, prior. So I, I felt fairly comfortable with this project. And I do want, also want to say congratulations. I think the design is very attractive. I love the way it's compliant with um, and consistent with the downtown um, master plan and the downtown overlay district. Everything about it checks those boxes that we talk about. Um, and the, on, the only first concern I had, of course, was height. You know, everyone's concerned about height, and a few residents had talked to me, but when you think about the Ormond Heritage just being two blocks away, you know, it, it's, it, it's very consistent with that whole, that whole area. And there was one comment I know at the planning board that a resident felt like we were losing our small beach town feel, but I respect that comment, but I totally disagree with it. I think this is what we need in our downtown area with the walkability, and it'll just increase it, and I, th I think it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'll echo all those comments. I've been excited about this since I first heard about it and saw some kind of draft renderings, but it does check a lot of boxes as far as smart growth and infill development exactly what a city would be looking for particularly in their downtown and uh, you know I'm excited it hasn't been built yet and nobody's moved in yet but I'm excited for the people that are gonna get to live there that's awesome for them and they're gonna absolutely love it and every good thing I said about the Lomans condos up on Halifax across from uh, Oceanside I'll say that for this project and maybe even more because they're closer to walk to the beach and it's a convenient walk to the river form Publix is right there uh, Ormond Memorial Art Museum is right there so many uh, exciting things that they'll be able to do and uh, they'll just they're gonna fall in love with our city support our businesses and our community and so I'm encouraged of all that so thank you for all that and um, there's nothing else. Mr. Mayor, I'll move you. approval of ordinance number 2023-38. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion or questions? Please call the vote. 
Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 9F. Ordinance number 2023-39, an ordinance authorizing the execution and issuance of a development order for a planned business development to be located at 121 East Granada Boulevard. Volusia County parcel number 4214-05-04-0051 to be known as 121 East, authorizing the development of 24 multifamily residential units and associated site improvements under certain conditions, establishing conditions and expirations of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-39, read by title only. Thank you. I don't have any additional cards. Just need a motion. I move approval of ordinance number 2023-39. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion or questions for Stephen or Mr. Merrill? Please call the vote. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. Thank you so much for your Congratulations. Time. Yep. Thank you all. 9G. Ordinance number 2023-40. An ordinance amending the future land use element of the comprehensive plan by amending the future land use map to change the designation of two parcels of real property, totaling 52 plus or minus acres located at 860 Hall Road and 1399 Hall Trail, from Volusia County Industrial to Ormond Beach Heavy Industrial, including a map annotation to limit the floor area ratio to 0 0.60, authorizing transmittal providing for conflict, providing for severability, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-40, read by title only. Thank you, Susan. And I'll ask Planning Director Stephen Spraker to speak on this item. This is a uh, large-scale comprehensive plan amendment and a little bit different than what we normally do uh, because it's over 50 acres. What we'll do is we'll transmit this to state agencies, Volusia County Growth Management Commission, get their comments and bring it back to you in October. Um, if you recall the Halifax paving annex into the city, um, they are doing a office, um, a new build required utility connection for water and sewer. Part of that, that required annexation. The next step is to provide a land use designation where required once properties are annexed into the city to give them a land use and zoning. The existing Volusia County land use is industrial. It allows a floor air ratio of 0.6. So we're matching that with a heavy industrial with a 0 0.06. Um, the property is shown here on the screen. Um, this doesn't include any other property but the Halifax paving uh, parcel. And it applies to the whole property. Um, in our review and our staff report, we found it consistent with policy 2.52. It's an appropriate use of land. The, the Existing use of Halifax paving is not changing. They're going to continue to do what they've always done, and now they're going to add an office um, to support their business. Um, this is an administrative amendment because it's based on annexation. Um, there will be no infrastructure impact because we've limited the floor ratio. The planning board recommended approval with a six to zero vote. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Stephen? Commissioner Sargent. This is not the uh, property where there's going to be fuel tanks and I don't know, I got an email about that and I just, sure. I think this is a separate parcel than what that was referring to. Correct, so that parcel is at, at 874 um, Hull Road. So it's this parcel own, currently owned by the FEC Railroad. So that doesn't have anything to do with Halifax paving. This property is unincorporated Volusia County and I believe they're going through a site plan process with the county. So if there are any comments on, on that project, the county would be the appropriate entity to provide those comments to. Thank you. Absolutely. Anyone else? Thank you. I don't have any cards on 9G. Move approval. Second. Any further discussion or questions? Please call the vote. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 9H. Ordinance number 2023-41. An ordinance amending Chapter 1, General Administration, Article 3, Definitions and Acronyms, Section 1-22, Definitions of Terms and Words, Chapter 2, District and General Regulations, Article 1, Establishment of Zoning Districts and Official Zoning Map, 
Section 2-02, Future Land Use Map, Designations and Zoning Districts. Chapter 2, District and General Regulations. Article 2, District Regulations. Section 2-07, Zoning District Designations. Chapter 2, District and General Regulations. Article 2, District Regulations. Section 2-33I-2, Reserved. Chapter 2, District and General Regulations, Article 4, Conditional and Special Exception Regulations, Section 2-57, Criteria for Review of Special Conditional and Special Exemption of the City of Ormond Beach Land Development Code by creating the I-2 Heavy Industrial Zoning District, providing use definitions and creating conditions for conditional and special exception uses, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, providing for severability and setting forth an effective date, this is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-41, read by title only. Thank you, Susan and uh, Stephen. I'll we'll ask you to speak briefly on this, and then there's only six more after this for you to speak on. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. So we have a heavy industrial land use, and we have an I-2 zoning that's reserved. So there was always the intention of creating an I-2 zoning district. Um, so what, what this amendment does, it creates definitions, creates the zoning district, it creates the criteria for the zoning district. This doesn't rezone any specific property. It provides a zoning district for future action by the commission. Um, this, this zoning isn't intended to be applied to existing city areas. Um, likely it will be very focused in and around where the Halifax paving site is. Planning board recommended approval with a six to zero vote. Any questions for Stephen? I don't have a question, but I just have a comment, okay. and I think this might be the appropriate time. So um, I, too, had questioned after receiving an email about that site being heavy industrial and um, whether that was the Belvedere Terminals, the fuel farm, per se. So I did have a discussion um, with staff and Stephen about it, and I think this is very appropriate after we've annexed in the land um, last time. This is very appropriate zoning and all that, but I do want to go on record that um, even though we can't do anything about the Volusia County property where that fuel farm is going to be looked at or most likely built out or proposed, I think that's um, something that I am definitely not in favor of for, for many reasons. Um, one could be environmental reasons, other would be traffic of 12 trucks, every loads an hour going up to the rail, railroad track and thinking, um, you know, we are growing out that way with development in the future. So my thought was, you know how we drive down Granada and we see the cement trucks on the right-hand side on Granada before US-1, the uh, cement facility, I don't know what it's called. When I first moved to town, I'm like, why in the world is that in the middle of our town? Well, when you think about it, Ormond was not, that was like way far out, and that was considered the right place. And now we're growing the other directions, and we're, you know, I would hate to see a fuel farm in the middle of where we're trying to grow. And I know residential won't be there, and it is a, a, an area where it is you know, heavy industrial, and it probably will be protected from residential. But I would like to avoid that look in the future. So I just felt compelled to put it on the record. I know it has nothing to do with this discussion, but I just needed to put it, and I didn't know where else to put it. So thank you for listening to me. Anyone else on 9-8? Move approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tallon? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. Nine aye. Ordinance number 2023-42, an ordinance amending the future land use element of the comprehensive plan of the City of Ormond Beach by amending the future land use map to change the designation of one parcel of real property totaling zero plus, zero point 0.24 plus or minus acres located at 204 Magnolia Drive, Volusia County parcel number 4214-20-02-0011 
from public institutional to low density residential providing for conflict authorizing transmittal and setting forth an effective date this is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-42 read by title only thank you and Stephen I'll let you give us a brief background when uh, the hotel and the related residential was coming through we noticed that there was a, a loan parcel with public institutional land use. Um, there's an existing single family house. That land use doesn't allow residential. Um, so there's an administrative amendment to correct that. So our goal is to take that from public institutional low density residential. Planning board recommend approval. This is an administrative amendment in our mind to correct a, an error that should have been corrected previously. Thank you. Any questions for Stephen? Chair, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, I'll move approval 2023-42. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 9J. Ordinance number 2023-43, an ordinance amending the future land use element of the comprehensive plan of the City of Ormond Beach by amending the future land use map to change the designation of a portion of one parcel of real property totaling 5.2 plus or minus acres located at 901 Airport Road, Volusia County parcel number 4238-01-40-0010 from light industrial utilities to open space conservation providing for conflict authorizing transmittal and setting forth an effective date this is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-43 read by title only thank you any uh, questions for Stephen on this item mr. Grab of approval second Movement seconded Stephen was there anything you wanted to add all right any further discussion please call the vote Commissioner Briley yes Commissioner Tolland yes Commissioner Sargent yes Commissioner Persis yes Mayor Partington yes 9k Resolution number 2023-116, a resolution authorizing the execution and issuance of an amended special exception development order to allow the addition of vacuum stalls within the front yard under certain conditions at Mr. Carwash located at 49 South Young Street, which is in the B-5 service commercial zoning district, establishing conditions and expiration date of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2000. 23-116 read by title only thank you and I'll ask planning director Stevens breaker to speak briefly on this item as well this is a special exception at 49 South Young Street uh, the goal is to add vacuum stalls in the front um, area of the property to remove an access point that is existing on US 1 and to install front yard landscaping um, if you recall this used to be a uh, sparkle uh, sparkle and shine had an intense uh, use on the frontage of US-1, cleared a canopy um, in, a, in a bunch of operations in the front of the house. Um, that has been removed and Mr. Carwash now owns it. They're seeking to um, allow the vacuums on their property. They're gonna maintain the ones in the rear of the property, but this would allow them to have a better business flow, be more efficient. There's an existing um, access out located here their site plan proposes to close that access point, which is a good thing because it's too close to the intersection. So they'll do a heavy landscape buffer and they've also proposed a very low um, vacuum. So they're not the traditional vacuums that you've seen um, throughout other car washes. To their credit, they've come up with a solution that basically doesn't, um, that makes these less visible and then the landscaping is designed to make it compatible from the roadway. In your packet, there was an exhibit the total height was three three feet nine inches. Again, it should be screened by the landscaping. The planning board did recommend approval with a six to zero vote, and the applicant is here if there are any questions of that. Thank you, Stephen. Any questions for Stephen? Any questions for the applicant? Move approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Jeff, I have a card from you if you wanted to speak, but I'm here to chat anyway. Commission, any further discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 9L. 
Resolution number 2023-117, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Ormond Beach, Florida, approving the preliminary plat for Archer's Mill Phase 2, shown within Phase 3 of the Plantation Oaks Planned Residential Development, establishing conditions and expiration date of approval, and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2023-117, read by title only. Thank you. Stephen, if you'll speak on L and M. Thank you. So both of these applications are preliminary plats. They're both located within the Plantation Oaks Plan Residential Development. Um, these are a general location. This is the entrance of um, the manufactured home, so it's in essence across the street. This is the FPL easement. Um, this is a little easier to see. So this is the entire Plantation Oaks Development. Phase two is, is located here. And the next one is phase three, which should be located here. So basically they're building out the, the planned residential development. Um, preliminary plat is leads to construction plans. So they'll go do constructions. They'll come back to the commission for a final plat, which is the subdivision of land. The planning board recommended approval of both of them with a six to zero vote. And the applicant is here if you need uh, questions on either one of them. Thank you. Any questions for Stephen or the applicant? I move approval of resolution number 2023-117. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. And Steve, I didn't want to cut you off. You're okay? Okay. Uh, 9M. Resolution number 2023-118, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Ormond Beach, Florida, approving the preliminary plat for Archer's Mill Phase 3, shown within Phase 3 of the Plantation Oaks Planned Residential Development, establishing conditions and expiration date of approval, and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2023-118, read by title only. Thank you. Again, no cards. Move approval. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion or questions? Please call the vote. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. We'll close the public hearings. Move to second reading of ordinances 10A. Thank you. Ordinance number 2023-34, an ordinance amending section 5-1 definitions of article one in general of chapter five, animals and fowl, amending section 5-10 animals constituting a nuisance prohibited of article one in general of chapter five, animals and fowl, amending section 5-13 feeding of feral or stray animals prohibited of article one in general of chapter five, animals and fowl, Amending section 5-23, running at large prohibited of article two, livestock of chapter five, animals and fowl. Amending section 5-25, notice of impounding of article two, livestock of chapter five, animals and fowl. Amending section 5-62, licenses annual fee of article three, dogs and cats. Other animals of chapter five, animals and fowl. Amending section 5-67, duplicate tags of article three, dogs and cats. Other animals of chapter five, animals and fowl. Amending section 5-69, running at large, prohibited of article three, dogs and cats. Other animals of chapter five, animals and fowl. Amending 5-70, impounding of violations of article three, dogs and cats. Other animals of chapter five, animals and fowl. Amending section 5-72, responsibility for payment and reclaiming after impoundment of article three, dogs and cats. Other animals of chapter five, animals and fowl. Amending section 5-78, dangerous dogs of article three, dogs and cats. Other animals of chapter five, animals and fowl. Amending section 5-79, exceptions of article three, dogs and cats. Other animals of chapter five, animals and fowl. Amending section 5-80, investigation and determination of dangerous dog of article three, dogs and cats. Other animals of chapter five, animals and fowl. Amending section 5-81, action to be taken by owners, keepers of dangerous dogs of article three, dogs and cats. Other animals of chapter five, animals and fowl. Amending section 5-82, reserved of article three, dogs and cats. 
other animals of chapter five animals and fowl amending section 5-83 optional action of article three dogs and cats other animals of chapter five animals and fowl of the city of ormond beach code of ordinances and setting forth an effective date this is the second reading of ordinance number 2023-34 read by title only mr mayor is this taylor's payback <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Susan, and uh, we'll get you some oxygen. <laughs> I'll ask City Attorney Randy Hayes to speak on this item. Well, this is the second reading of the, uh, the uh, Dangerous Dog Ordinance where we amended it to, um, in a way that's still consistent with uh, Florida law, it just adds a second category um, of uh, aggressive dog. And uh, what it will do is allow our uh, animal control officers to get involved in the process a little earlier, um, identify some of these dogs that could potentially become dangerous at a subsequent date. There's fines associated with that. There's a due process um, that's been included in there. So this is intended to address some of the concerns that were raised by residents uh, a few months ago. Uh, and um, this is also consistent with um, an approach that at least one other jurisdiction has taken. So it has not been challenged yet, uh, from what we can tell. So we're pretty confident that since it's, it doesn't uh, contravene uh, Florida law, that it would be enforced if it is challenged. Thank you. Any questions for Randy? No. I move approval of ordinance number 2023-34. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? If not, please call the vote. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. Uh, resolutions 11A. Resolution number 2023-119, a resolution authorizing the execution of an amendment and restatement of shared parking lot usage agreement between the city and NN rate LP and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2023-119, read by title only. Thank you. Uh, Stephen, if you'll give us just a brief background on this one. This is a request to amend a, a parking agreement. I'm not sure what they have. Um, basically, in 2002, there was a um, joint agreement between the city and Sparkle and Shine to jointly develop a parking area. Um, that agreement didn't expressly allow them to put the vacuums there. Vacuums are there today. They intend that the new owner would like to keep them. Staff has no objection. Um, it is not city property. They own the property that those vacuums would be on. And um, staff's recommending approval. Any questions for Stephen? Move approval. Second. Any further discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. Staff action items, uh, 12A, we need a Florida League of Cities voting delegate for the uh, conference in Orlando. I nominate Mayor Partington. I thought <laughs> I was I'm not quick going? enough on the uptake. I will be there, um, and that's fine. But I didn't know if somebody else wanted to do it. It's always good to develop uh, those skills if anybody else is interested. And going to be there. Okay. I mean, I'll do it if you don't want to. The, uh, if you, I mean, I, I, they usually say the mayor does it. The mayor is the one that usually. Not, not always. Um, it's fine with me if you want to do it. I'll second. Commissioner Persis, it is. Okay. Thank moved, you. Moved okay. and seconded, and uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed thank like you. sign. And thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> reports, suggestions, and requests, and tonight we start with City Manager Joyce Shanahan. Um, first, I wanted to address the residents that came tonight to talk about the uh, problem house on Wilmette. That is, um, we expect that that will be uh, taken down within uh, 30 days. As you know, there's a code enforcement process, and sometimes it takes longer than we would like it to happen to get that. You can't oh. hear me? No? Can you hear me? I'm better. Okay, I'm sorry. So I'm here to tell you that the code enforcement process is is working for that home on Wilmette that the individuals came to talk about. 
the chief advised me tonight that it should be down within 30 days. So I know that it's troublesome and it's a problem area, but the code enforcement process requires a certain amount of time to go through. So staff is actively uh, working that item. Uh, secondly, I wanted to uh, report that the police department presented to Sergeant Michael Garner, the Police Officer of the Year Award for 2022, and some of you were there for, to see that. And likewise, they um, uh, designated uh, Community Service Officer Shannon Champion to receive the Civilian Employee of the Year for 2022. We're so very proud of what our police department does every day, and uh, it was nice to see those individuals recognized. And I believe they are selected by their peers, so that's an even more important designation. Um, I don't really have much other, you know, there's a lot of community events happening. Summer Sounds is uh, this weekend, which is, um, uh, will feature the band, the Hindenburgs, I'm not sure about that one, um, and Traces of Gold. So that's on Friday and um, at the casements. Movies on the Halifax will be happen on August 4th, the Princess Diaries, and um, you'll be back before I can report the other ones. So, and I also just want to take a moment to um, express my deep appreciation to Officer Stokes for all that he has done in his uh, years of service with our, our community. I've had the pleasure of uh, attending DARE when he uh, was in charge of DARE and just see the kids scream and run up to him with such excitement every time that he would um, be there. Uh, and, I always loved how um, they brought donuts for the kids as their treat at the end of the, the time, the five or six weeks of the course. And, and he would make light of um, cops bringing donuts. Um, and it was great fun. But I will tell you, I have uh, personally witnessed Mr. Joe Daniels and Officer Stokes at the Dunkin' Donut enjoying donuts. So um, <laughs> uh, that's always good fun to see them there. Uh, I'd like to pick on both of them. So uh, it's, you know, we have such a wonderful community here in Ormond Beach, and, and I feel personally blessed every day to uh, be a part of the city. And I am richly blessed by a commission that does their homework and deliberates with great um, thought and care on every issue that comes before you. And so I just want to appreciate your work on, on the budget earlier this evening. Um, I've spoken to all of you in the last two days so many times. I didn't even know who was coming or going at one point today because we had so many meetings. But So I thank you for your time and energy that you put into the budget. It's always a, a difficult process, but you do an amazing job for our community, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions for Joyce? Thank you, Joyce. Assistant City Manager Claire Whitley. Uh, I texted a picture of Officer Stokes to my daughter tonight, and she said, OMG, no, with three three O's on it, and I love him so much. And it's, as, as you know, it's just great to hear your children say anything positive about school, you know, and feel the excitement. Thank you, good night. Nice, thank you. And City Attorney Randy Hayes. Thank you, Randy. And tonight, we start with Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to echo what Joyce said about congratulating Sergeant Michael Gardner and um, Civilian of the Year, Shannon Champion. It's an awesome honor for both of them, and we're grateful to have them. Uh, I also would like to say thank you to the Budget Advisory Board and to Kelly McGuire and Chris Bile for working on this budget. Um, it's difficult, you know, as we are, you know, we have about a million dollars in there for to upgrade the... Um, sound system in here, video, um, the web page, things that cost, like I said, almost a million dollars. This stuff hasn't been updated in 30 years, unfortunately. Now's the time we have to do it. Um, so thank you to everyone that you know helped us prepare for that. Um, great uh, Independence Day celebration. Uh, staff did a, an amazing job. Robert, y'all always do an amazing job. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Joyce, for um, helping those residents that came to speak tonight. And also thank you to you and staff for helping to clean up a few homeless sites that we've identified throughout the community. One was on um, Orchard, just north of Office Depot. 
I think the hard part with these sites is a lot of these parcels are owned by resident or not residents really people that live out of state and they don't even know what's going on in their property so unless they're identified and fill out the paperwork with the police department our hands are tied and just this one site we had over 40 bags of trash eight shopping carts and then they brought in a bobcat and a dumpster <laughs> to finish it off and there's still tents on there but I know y'all are working on it um, yes it's amazing but Thank you. Um, and with that, I'll say good night. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Persis. Good evening, everyone. I just have a couple of things I'd like to share. Um, first of all, um, I'd like to um, echo what um, Commissioner Sarge just said about the 4th of July. It was absolutely fabulous. The grand finale of those fireworks were just tremendous. I mean, they were great. So leisure services, and Rob, all of you, you know, that's a lot of work, and it was fabulous. Everybody was talking about it. It was just great. So again, Orma Beach did it, and you did it in great fashion. Um, I also wanted to mention Officer Stokes, myself, too. When I was the principal at Pine Trail Elementary School, he was our DARE officer, and that's really how I got to know him. And um, I can tell you, the kids love their dare, dare officers no matter, but I tell you what, Officer Stokes took it to another level, a total no other level, and those kids talking about screaming and getting excited and really relating to someone, um, it, it's, it's really um, very, very special, and he, you know, he's, he deserves a lot for what he's given to our children in our county, so I'm just very appreciative of him, and it was a well-earned honor for Officer Stokes. And um, I loved hearing your story, D Joe Daniels, you and Officer Stokes. That's amazing. So thank you for all you have done for him and others. Um, and lastly, I just want to um, say something. Um, we all know that Commissioner Bohm and his wife, Dee, lost their daughter um, over the weekend. And I did have the opportunity to speak with both of them. And But what, what they told me was something really special that I really, I'm sorry the chief isn't here, but someone I know will share this with the chief but in the middle of the night two female police officers came and they had to help out with the situation with the death of their daughter and Dee Bohm told me that the police officers that came couldn't have been more kind sympathetic caring and couldn't have been more supportive during such a horrible time in their lives and that was something they noticed that night after what they were going through so our police officers are amazing and they did whatever they did to make the Bowmans feel special they did it and um, I think that speaks volumes for our police department and for our chief and with that I'll say good night thank you thank you Commissioner Deputy Mayor Briley thank you mr. mayor and I'll echo the comments of the staff leisure services folks fantastic Fourth of July celebration you know it was, it was a great night the weather cooperated it cooled off a little bit fortunately um, the rain held off fortunately and uh, it was a great event thank you again for everything you guys do um, I also like to congratulate and accommodate officer Stokes sing his praises you know you can tell by his comments tonight that he really loves this community and as folks like Greg Stokes that not only make our community a great place but also is a great reflection upon our police department because I do truly believe that all of our officers care probably just as much as Greg Stokes does about this city so and I also like to uh, uh, congratulate uh, Judge Schumann and not Alex didn't know that Judge Schumann was your mother but we thank her for her service to this community she's been a great judge and uh, you have a lot to be proud of um, I also want to uh, extend my condolences to the Bohm family. You know, Rick and Dee have given a lot to this city, uh, continue to give a lot to this city, and it's just very heartbreaking. I can never, you know, unless you've been through it, you can never experience the loss of a child. And I'm sure I know that's just, it's out of order. It's not the way it's supposed to happen. And I, I feel very, very sorry, very badly. For the, for the Bowman family and please keep them in your in your thoughts and prayers in the coming days um, I didn't know on maybe two discussion items mr. mayor that we can maybe just discuss now um, as far as the public comments from, from uh, Suzanne Schreiber and Missy Herrera 
I, I don't have any issue with our you know with us supporting uh, what they've proposed and, and sending some sort of letter of support to the county council to that extent. I don't know, Joyce, is there any cost to that? I don't think so. I think they're just looking for your support. They're just looking for a letter of endorsement. Support, I letter agree. Support. Okay. So that's something you can send? Yeah, I can send you it. You can send a letter. I think you should send it. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, and last but not least, um, I've gotten a few phone calls, well, actually, uh, messages regarding the, uh, the DOT plan for reducing lanes on Nova Road and uh, the reduction from six lanes to four lanes. And at a time when this community is experiencing the growth that we're experiencing and with what could be coming in Tomoka Oaks and what will be coming out west of us, I think it's unconscionable to talk about reducing lanes when in many areas we probably need to look at expanding lanes. I'm not, I'm, and I'm not promoting expanding lanes but I just don't think we need to be reducing lanes. So I don't know if we want to, uh, you know, discuss with, with DOT their plans, you know, in, in further depth and further detail with DOT. But, uh, you know, eight foot sidewalks in an area where you don't see a lot of pedestrians and removing two lanes of a six lane roadway, I think is, you know, I think it's regressive. I think that's worthy of a discussion. I think so too. Probably a workshop with DOT invited yeah. to explain the science behind how four lanes moves traffic better than six lanes. Um, because of the concept of induced demand, you end up with worse flow and faster uh, traffic with more deadly accidents with six lanes um, than you get with four lanes. So certainly a lot of consideration okay okay Good deal. oh that thank you mr Mayor. thank you uh commissioner Tolland. you saved the best for last right that's right all right great i do have a book just bear with me um and uh, although we haven't met um in the chambers for a long time so i gave myself an extra page of comments because it's been a while and i don't want to lose that momentum with you guys um, but I just want to say a couple things. Um, I'm amazed at the number of folks that are engaged in city matters because of their passion for the city. Um, and I've, I realize even more so now that you, it's, it's not the elected officials that make a difference, it's all the individual citizens that work together to make the difference. And I do appreciate anyone that offers their opinion about our great little city um, and what we can do when you come with a solution um, to continue to enhance it. Um, as a recap, I'm not going to describe them. I'm just trying to give us a little of what the, I want the public to know, a lot of the things that we've been doing while we've been off. Um, I personally have been going to some Regrow the Loop meetings, planning and educational. I've gone to some civil discourse planning meetings. I've gone to Citizens for Ormond Beach meetings. I attended a really nice breakfast, um, a PACE breakfast honoring Miriam Giavi White and um, really understood what PACE does in our community. Um, we had a fun groundbreaking at Tomoka Elementary. Um, I've attended a River to Sea TPO meeting where they talked about budget, priorities, FDOT updates. And one interesting fact that I found, and I probably shouldn't have been surprised, but they, they were stating that Homelessness has increased 17% in our area from 2022 to 23. Um, I went to the county growth and management workshop, scenic loop meetings, downtown Main Street monthly meetings, and had a fun 4th of July fireworks celebration. Um, I was a little amazed when we approved the amount of money we did for fireworks. And I was like, oh, this is just way too much but there's no way you can ever say no to the fireworks. And we do such a fun job and everybody enjoys it. Um, did attend the uh, Ormond Beach Police Department when they honored um, Sergeant Michael Gardner and um, Community Service Officer Shannon Champion. And that was a, a very nice event. Um, 
Now, I would like to, and I just mentioned this, um, Harold, I would like to endorse and offer support to the Wildlife Corridor Initiative presented by Suzanne Scheiber. Um, our actions today can help the sustainability of our future and protect wildlife and, and con conserve land in the future. Um, so I thought what I would do really quick is just to update you on the Regrow the Loop initiative since we've endorsed, the, or we've endorsed that. Um, stakeholders are continuing to meet and the board is growing in numbers and ideas. There have been two educational workshops. I know um, Commissioner Persis went to one. I don't think you went to the second one. Um, they've been held in our library and they've been very well attended. Um, the state court, Stakeholder groups are now offering additional learning experiences through their own programs and walks coordinating with um, Regrow, the group, Regrow the Loop. The Scenic Loop folks, the Native Plant folks, the UF IFAS Extension, the Audubon Society, all are playing a major role in this pilot program in educating others. Even our Tomoka State Park Rangers are assisting as well. Um, I publicly want to thank Scott Vanacore for his sponsorship of sourcing and and planting and future planting of 1,000 to 2,000 linear feet of native trees and plant additional plantings along the buffer uh, just south of the entrance to a coma um, up on the loop. Uh, the buffer plant material was chosen with the input of the Native Plant Society president, Leslie Nixon. And I also want to thank Volusia County for assisting with, their, they will be assisting with the watering schedule um, that has been designed and um, until the plants are established, established in their natural state. It's just a great example of collaboration and when you can put a lot of great minds together what, what the city can do or what the county is doing. Um, as a reminder, this pilot program is ending in late spring. I'm excited to see where it goes. At some point, um, I'll probably be asking for a workshop with you all to see how we would, if we're interested in continuing support and what the city can do in the future to, pro to promote and grow the loop. Um, also, there is, if anyone cares to, go on the Volusia County website. You can look at the Regrow the Loop and there is a personal pledge and an education piece if you're interested in that. Um, and I actually would like, I don't know if it's something I can ask now, if we could put that on our Facebook um, information as well, if you guys are okay with that. Um, and that would just be a direction to go to the Volusia County website, Regrow the Loop. Briefly, congrats to Judge Schumann. I had no idea that was your mom. That's so cool. He must be very proud of her. Um, Officer Greg Stokes, my kids did not um, interact with Greg in the school system, but they were at South Orman and they saw him all the time. And he was just a very positive influence. And yay for Parks and Rec Recreation. I'm so glad it's our month. Um, it's my jam. I love Parks and Recreation, so congratulations, um, Robert. I want to thank Kelly. She's amazing. Budget Advisory Board. I was really um, um, appreciative of the hard work that they did in bringing forth the suggestions they did. Staff input, thank you. Commission, thank you for the lively discussion. And as you know, sometimes it, it, it just takes a little bit of discussion like that to to put all the ideas out and hopefully we can all keep moving forward and coming up with those good ideas. And last but not least, um, I do want to extend my deepest sympathy to the Bohm family and I just, God bless them. Amen. Amen. Right. Thank you. That's it. Good night. You guys covered everything. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>